Radka and welcome to another edition of FLX Weekly here at FingerLakes1.com. It is January 19th, 2022 and we are live inside the FingerLakes1.com studio where I'm joined by Jim Senecropi and Mark Benjamin who is here today to talk about some fun upcoming programs that will be going on at Seneca Meadows. Today's show is brought to you by DeSanto Propane and they actually came to us with an energy saving tip which we love to save some money you know. So any ceiling fans you have in your house, did you know if you switch them to spin in reverse during the colder months, this will push the warm air back into the room instead of letting the air rise, which will then save you some more money because you keep the heat. What you, you talking know? about? I'm talking about an energy saving tip oh, for, right. from DeSanto Propane. Yeah, You've never heard that? that? No, I did not know that. Did you know that? You know, I learn something new every day, and this is the first thing. Yay! <laughs> I love that I could help you guys. I actually knew that. Like, you put the fan in reverse for certain months, you know, whatever. But, you know, the regular way is supposed to make it cold air. <laughs> so, DeSanto <laughs> Propane has been serving the clean energy needs of upstate New York homeowners, businesses, and home builders since 1937. And if you're not a customer, you can simply go to DeSantoPropane.com, fill out their customer application today, and get started with them. They're very well known around here. And Absolutely. They're also, like, can't be better than telling you how to save money by giving you little energy tips on their Facebook. Well, I didn't know you could do that with your ceiling fans. I can't so. believe you didn't know that, actually. Yeah. I feel like I am the smartest one in the room right now. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> today we're going to talk about some events. We haven't seen you in a little bit. Hello, Mark. How, how you been? been? It's been a little while. Yeah, thank you for having me back. It's always a pleasure to be here, and it's always a pleasure to see you both. So, so uh, yeah, we've got lots of good stuff coming up this year in 2022. And we're starting off quick. This weekend, we have a Bookshare program. It's going to be on Zoom. uh, And you can just go to our website and register for that and get the Zoom link. Uh, The website, of course, is SenecaMeadows.com. Beautiful. Uh, And what will be happening is, is as you know, our our Audubon educator, Kristen Moore, she will be talking about her favorite environmental books, sustainability books, and um, and the like, and and encouraging participants to, to share their they're great books of the outdoors and uh, that sort of thing. And uh, she'll also be talking about some books that are we recently donated over at the Waterloo Library. So if anyone would like to check them out, they can go check awesome. them out at the Waterloo Library. We cool. miss her today. Usually she comes on with you, and today we had to only have you. We're sad about that, though. <laughs> no <laughs> about offense. Kristen. No offense to you, but <laughs> I was looking forward to seeing her. Well, hopefully I can uh, I can do double duty today. Yeah, you're, I think you're doing great already. So you have the Bookshare event that goes on <coughs> January 22nd. That's it's, this weekend. Yeah, wow, already. Yes. January's already mm-hmm. almost over, guys. Great. That's crazy. Can't go great. by fast enough. January can't oh, go by geez. fast enough. Don't wish your life away. That's from just, 11 to 1 p.m., and that's all that's on, on Zoom, Zoom. And you can get the registration link if you go to SenecaMeadows.com, click on upcoming events and you'll get it there. Beautiful. So one of the greatest things I think you guys do is your Christmas bike bicycle program. Um, How did that go this year? Thank you. That went uh, that went great. Um, We uh, handed out uh, 212 bicycles to local kids and families and this year we partnered with uh, Safe Harbors, we partnered with the House of Concern, uh, we partnered with the Ovid Food Pantry, the Lodi Library, and, of course, our local Head Start here over on Bayard Street. Awesome. Hmm. So when you give away these 212 bikes to kids, how does that all happen? Do, they, do you see them get the bike, or do you they get they give it to their parents? or like How does that work? Well, we usually give it to the, the parents or the guardians. Yep. Uh, there are some, so when we have the giveaway, which is the Saturday before Christmas, mm-hmm. we have that at our facility. And they come, the, the folks come in there and they do a, we do like a little drive through format. Uh, oh, since cool. COVID started, sure, I was yeah. thinking that was the safer way to do it. And so, um, so they come through the drive through format and Santa Claus is there, who is, who is uh, town supervisor, uh, Ernie Brownell. No, uh, okay. He plays Santa Claus and hands out candy. <laughs> awesome. uh, and so there are, so there are some kids that, that do uh, come along with their parents and, yep. and 
it's great to see their smiling faces. And then there's some others that the parents bring the bike home and save it for Christmas morning. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, that's and, awesome. And that's why we do it the Saturday before Christmas, right? Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Because storing a couple of bikes and hiding them from your kids might not be that easy. <laughs> now, and seeing pictures of the event in the past, like the bikes all come in and have to be assembled, right? So two hundred. It's not oh. just like you just get, lay out the money and everybody gets a bike. Well, that's There's true. A lot more work to it. That's true. But but first, I'd like to talk about the money because okay. The other thing is, and I want to thank you personally for helping to contribute to that because you helped us buy a few bikes. Yay! So Finger, Finger Lakes One, thank you so much for doing that and, and contributing to that, and you were you were a big part of that. We can't do it without uh, our our vendors and our customers and our friends. So thank you so much. So cute. I love it. Wait, so you just, I want to go back. You just said that you have to assemble these bikes. So you basically well, I've seen pictures have, in the floor where like 216, yeah. 17 bikes, 212 this year, 212 bikes. Um, you know, if bikes don't usually ship from the bike factory and right. ready to ride, uh, right. they, you are right. They come in these large boxes. Yeah. That's a and lot of little we, elves. We rip the boxes open and then we start putting them together. Now, uh, these days, when we first started the program, the bikes weren't so easy to assemble. You actually had to turn some wrenches and put some, you know, mm -hmm. put some muscle into it, guidance into it, right? <laughs> uh, these days, a lot of the bikes are kind of uh, click together and unfold, and and uh, they're a Jeez. lot easier than they used to be. Huh. Uh, but it is still quite a task yeah. to put the bikes together, and, and of course, Walmart helps us uh, a little bit in that regard as well. How so with staff? With some uh, they, they help us uh, they help us put some of the bikes together and then our employees gather over a couple evenings um, and also put them together and then uh, we also get some community members to come and join us and and put them together as well we had uh, we had several Waterloo high school students come out this year and help us awesome. great it was, it's it was all great. the behind the scene things right. that you might not think about I mean you guys do so much and you have so many more events just off of my little notes I'm going off of. I think a cool one that's coming up is uh, it's called Trip to Costa Rica. Now, they're not actually getting to go with you guys to Costa Rica, but um, Kristen Moore will be doing a Zoom event again, correct? That is, uh, that, well, it, she's actually going to do it on Facebook Live, that oh, one. Oh, okay. Uh, and, you know, as you know, it's not always accessible for everyone to go to Costa Rica in the yeah, middle of the exactly. winter when right. it's probably a nice time to go. Yeah. Uh, so we're hoping to bring Costa Rica to to everyone here awesome. and we're going to do There's that on a picture Facebook of Live. In, in Costa Rica. Oh yes. yeah. You can't even see the best part of well, the picture, I can show, right? I can show it if you give me a second here. We can She's so, she's so cute. So, so she was in Costa Rica in that picture and she's going to get to talk about all her uh So she's going to she's, she's going to tell us about yeah. her experiences there and uh she's also uh going to um talk about what what she was doing down there and and uh and then, you know, bringing Costa Rica to us here. That'd be kind of a cool thing to tune into just to see. Like, I'm sure she's got lots of footage and videos from when she was down there. I think she does, yeah. And yeah. she's got to obviously incorporate that in there. So It's going to be, awesome. a, yeah, it'll be a great program. Uh, so, so again, you can go to SenecaMeadows.com and get the link to that okay. uh, for the Facebook Live. Or you can just go to Facebook and and search for the Seneca Meadows Education Center, and you can pull it up that way. And that is January 29th, and that is a 11 to 12.30 event. Yes, that's correct. Beautiful. Do people have to, um, do you suggest that they, like, register for some of these ahead of time, or is it kind of you so, can come whenever? So the, the, this weekend Zoom is a Zoom format, and so they'll need to register okay. to get the link. Right, um, but something like Facebook Live, you can Facebook just Live, in. just, just, just uh, tune in, and, and you're ready to roll. And these are all free events. These are like, that's what I think people forget. If it's like you're snowed in on maybe getting some of the weather like we did the past week, um, you can do stuff with your kids that might be interesting to them and you don't have to spend any money to do it. That's exactly right. And we're so grateful to be able to provide these these programs to the community. And, you know, we and, and really we couldn't do it without the, the operation of the landfill. So, right. you know, we're, we're grateful that we can tie all this together and and. Mm -hmm. and provide these programs if you haven't done a zoom event yet like maybe a lot of these folks who might be candidates to want to do this with their kids might have never done a zoom event. it's easy you'll get a link in your email after you register and you'll click on it and essentially you'll be you'll be part of it, yeah. part of it. 
you have entered the group. That yeah, right. that's true. And that you can simple. you can do it on your laptop. You can do it yeah. on your desktop. You can do it on your your smartphone. Yep. So it's really easy and accessible to most people. Most people, I think, these days have a smartphone. So. And I was just going to say, most people these days, at this point, I think, hopefully, a lot of them have had to do Zoom for something in the past year and a half. More than Zoom. certainly did two Absolutely. years ago. Yeah. yeah, probably people that would never have had to touch Zoom in their life now might be pros at it. Yeah, I think you're right. Is the, I want to skip to February, we're going right down the line. Getting out from behind the computer yes. and actually out in person for this you one, right? read my mind. Is this one an in-person? So we may not be so happy about the snow we ha had the other day, but right. we're hoping that we have some snow on February 12th for our snowshoeing at the Seneca Meadows Wetlands Preserve. Oh, okay, that'd be fun. That starts That's at 11 a.m. Absolutely, it is a workout. Now, if we don't have snow, we'll just do a hike and, and we'll still have some fun outside. Right. Um, because hopefully in February, the weather is, is gonna be a little bit more mild than, than what we've seen over the past week or so. You never know. Yeah, but you, you never know. know. <laughs> so so prepare, for, prepare for the weather and, and we'll be out there on February 12th. Either way, you get outside, get some fresh air. You might be cooped up all January. What if you don't have snowshoes? We provide the snowshoes. Okay. I would think, yeah. I, do you know a lot of people that have snowshoes? Who doesn't? Around? I definitely do not have snowshoes. <laughs> no, Maybe I should I get I used to some. have cross-country skis. Oh. Um, but I don't anymore. I mean, I'm talking like when I was a kid. You you definitely don't, but <laughs> Sojourn and Farms. I've um, heard of it. It was a like a cross country ski resort somewhere near here, I, um, like really close. Like you know, tire. I'm not sure exactly I, where. I don't remember short. that one. We did a lot of cross country oh, skiing as a kid age. as well. Uh, of course, I grew up in the southern tier, yeah. so we were we were more down in that area. But I remember uh, go, there's a Highland Forest over near Syracuse or Tully or in that area, which mm. was great for cross country skiing. Yes, this um, was Soldier and Farm. It was a, a farm in the summer, and they converted it to a, a, they had trails, trail maps, a lodge inside the barn where you could get food and drink. Um, we used to go quite a bit cross-country skiing, and then I would all um, cross-country ski in my backyard because my <laughs> neighbor's backyard and our backyard, when you combine them, it was Big, pretty big enough to take a nice loop, and then um, down at this golf course at Sanger Falls Country Club, would go cross country skiing. What? Yeah, I bet you that's a great place to go. Yeah, and matter of fact, I wouldn't mind seeing that develop into something more. But uh, you know, I, I don't think there's a huge market for cross country skiing anymore. It was a, it was a big thing, um, you know, in like the '80s for some. For I think it's kind of gone away a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm hearing more interest from people that I speak to, so maybe it'll maybe it'll you know Come be a new trend. Around. It's Absolutely. a workout. A trend. Yeah, it's it'll more be of a bad. workout. Um, you know, it's it's not as exciting as downhill skiing. I went uh, downhill but. skiing only once in my life, and I think I should get over that experience and try it again. But it was my very first time, and the people I were with were horrible teachers and took me to, like, a big hill right away. I had never put skis on in my life. I was so miserable going down that hill because they just left me. And I'm like... All I know, what I've seen or heard people say was like, oh, pizza, to try and slow down and like put your skis like this. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I was doing the whole time and the I wedge, was so miserable, yeah. almost went off the dang hill. And mm. I was like, I'm never doing this again. I was, I was <laughs> like, I'm not going back up that. And it was sad because people seem to have a lot of fun. But it, no, that, yeah, downhill skiing is a lot of fun. Yeah, I've never been much of a downhill skier, but any winter activity, you know, it's, it's, hardcore skiers look forward to winter. Yeah, Imagine I know. that. I know. No, I'll stay on a snowmobile. I'll do snowmobiling all day, but that that scarred me for life. Well, that's, that's another crazy. popular winter sport is snowmobiling, right? Yeah. Yep. And but if you're not into any of that, snowshoeing is a good start. Snowshoeing, is, and, and that historically has been a very popular program that we host almost mm -hmm. every year. And so I would encourage folks to, again, go to the website, sign up, get your, get your place reserved because we do have a limited amount of snowshoes available. Right, yeah, so it's still a workout, but you have more control. You know, you're not, you're actually walking yourself on those snowshoes. Now I feel like I need to get snowshoes for when I'm walking my dog and give my neighbors <laughs> an interesting, <laughs> interesting winter show. So moving on from that, you ha you'll have more information. We're getting a little farther out where you'll have more information down the road, but you have things like a Mardi Gras food, which I'd assume would be things that would taste great and be celebrated New Orleans. during Mardi Gras. Yeah, absolutely. And that'll be another online program as yeah. well. So uh, I don't know as it's been determined if it's going to either be on Facebook or Zoom yet, but um, more details to follow. And you can just check back to the website and, 
and we'll have it updated as we go along. It blows my mind. And as we continue to go along, I, you know, I would like to tease you, hopefully we can maybe come back on early spring and announce, we have a, an exciting announcement uh, regarding the wetlands preserve and something that's happening over there. Hmm. So love to, love to come back uh, later this spring and, uh, and talk about that. If we get to break it, then we'd love to have yes, you. Yes, you heard it here first. I love saying that. You tried it here first, you heard it here first. But like now my mind, I have so many things going on thinking what it could be. So that's exciting. That's in the spring. We got some time. So early, early spring, I think we will want to announce that. Okay, it's gives not too us, far away. Spring gives us something to look forward far. to. Do you want to, while we're here, just really quick, do you want to tell us the weather, even though you're not going to be around to enjoy the weather this weekend? Well, the weather um, on Friday is going to be our Thursday, 69 and sunny. Friday, 69 and sunny. Ah. Saturday, uh, but that's the Las Vegas weather yeah. where I'll be. <laughs> you had me for a minute. I was like, wait, what? No. Um, you're looking at Friday, partly sunny and cold, high near 10. Oh, great, great. Uh, Friday, and this is after today. It's uh, going to get into the 40s, so we might see a little bit of a melt, but then everything gets right back down again for the weekend. So, um, you know, you're going to be down to around zero on Friday night, overnight. Saturday, mostly sunny, high near 19. Beautiful January day, crisp. Oh, yeah. And then back down to a, a low of around 8 on Saturday night. And then on Sunday, just a chance of some snow showers, mostly cloudy with a high near 26. Back to work on Monday, uh, mostly cloudy, high near 21. So cold, but no more uh, storms moving through, dumping more snow on us. So I well, must that's say. good. And, I'm, and I also want to talk about, um, went to Rosalie's for dinner, but before we were going to stop at Prison City this okay. past weekend in uh, Prison City Brewery. And um, I was like, okay. And then on the way, they were like, uh, they didn't take the right to Prison City, heading Route 5 in Auburn. They took a left. And I'm like, where are we going? And they're <laughs> like, oh, it's the new Prison City. I'm like, there's a new Prison City? So apparently Prison City has a new location on North Street in Auburn. And, of course, they're, they, according to a couple lists, they have, like, the number one uh, IPA in oh, the wow. country right now. Um, but... Yeah, it's called the North Street Urban Farm in uh, on North Street in Auburn, <laughs> and all the f that's where they're brewing a lot of their beer now. It looked like a lot of tanks and stuff, but a really nice little uh, uh, room, I guess, with a with a nice bar and several tables. Uh, great food, and uh, all the enjoy the beer of Prison City. So yeah, that's what I got new. a flight of beer and uh, charcuterie tray. Mm. A great soft pretzel that had um, dipping sauces, but the best sauce was this like honey butter uh, sauce that was like unbelievable. It was unique. I don't know what the other, t I could taste the honey and the butter, and there was something else to it, but um, yeah, that was good. It, maybe not eat a whole pretzel before you go to dinner at Rosalie's and Skinny Antlers. Oh, yeah, right. right. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But I'd recommend checking them, checking them out. Uh, Prison City, one of the success stories in the region for mm -hmm. us, for craft brewing especially, and now they have a second location. Um, so yeah, and it was a little more subdued than the downtown location, um, which is next to like Asteria Salina. Yeah. Uh, I love right that there, spot, though. the Armory Square, I call it maybe. In a, but love to go to Asteria. Really love to go to Asteria. <laughs> now um, you're making me hungry, but, like for real. But yeah, Prison City, second location. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I'd recommend it. The second location. So does it not have full meals or does it have just nope, kind of like Nope, they just had uh, and... bar food type, okay. of, type of stuff. That's Actually, yeah, not, not a ton of options, but, uh, but they had all the beers that you would get at the main location. You could almost go there first, you know, and then, you know, take the left or take the right. And go, go back to, to the, the other, other prison city, do yeah. two prison cities in one yeah. day. I don't know. That kind of seems kind of crazy. <laughs> I but think you it could, seems very, you could. I bet it happens all the time. You certainly but. could. You, you know, I heard that they had, they also have concerts there and oh, yeah. uh, I think they've been doing like a, a yoga program over at the new location. Really? As well. It yeah. might've been goat <coughs> yoga. You might've saw that. You know, I don't know. I'm not sure. Goat yoga. Yeah. You haven't heard of it? I've heard of it, but I didn't know they were doing I it in know. Auburn. I would love to do it. They're so cute. I'm piggybacking off of you, though, and I went to the new and updated Tory Park uh, in Geneva on Friday. So what was new about it? The inside of it is completely changed. Really? Like, they have these, they have so many rooms that you can go in now, and each room has, like, a different theme, and it's pretty, like, unique. Like, if I had a picture and... 
we were in our own little nook. They pushed us like inside the wall and we had like our own private little space. And then they had like this pretty wallpaper and neon signs to make it more modern. And the uh, menu has changed, but it's changed hmm. for the better. I'd say they have so many different homemade pastas and sauces and just any everything. old classics from the old menu remain or is it all new i think um they have a few old w classics but like i looked at mostly all the new stuff i've been to tory park and loved it a million times and right. never had any problems and i felt like everything just tasted that much better i don't know how or no what i've heard changed, a lot of i know less a lot of my friends have been there in the past week or so uh it's weird because yeah you're like the third person that told me they went and they so all loved it. So that means you it. need to go. Especially. Oh no, I would love to go to Torrey Park. You being the food connoisseur that... Well, everybody's a food are. connoisseur. Who doesn't eat food, right? I would like to pretend I <laughs> That's <but> true. <laughs> have you gone to any new exciting restaurants You know, lately? we have not been dining out recently, oh. although although um, I'm going back a few weeks. We... Um, we were, we were, uh, my alma mater was playing over at the Dome for their high school football The UNLV running Rebels. No, no, well, my high school alma mater oh, okay. was at the Carrier Dome <laughs> playing in the, cool. in the high school championships, and we decided to go. Um, and so before that, we went over to that, uh, there's a German restaurant uh, called Danzer's, which yes. is not too far away. And it was good? And it was delicious and amazing, and it was, it was yeah. So I, I, I've so wanted to go there for a while. My wife's a vegetarian. Um, our pescatarian, she eats fish and stuff. But would there be something there for her? Or probably not. It's mostly strudel and sausage and yeah, like meat. Brambles. Well, they do. They do have a fish. Uh, they do have a fish item. Okay, yeah. perfect. Well, maybe that'll be enough to yeah. give it a try. Yeah, that's awesome. And so there you go. If you have three recommendations, <laughs> if you're looking for something, that's what we change it into. Weekend. You can plan it accordingly to do a little something with you guys during the day, have a little Zoom, and then take yourself out to a nice local restaurant. There's so many to choose from. I think this week, this Friday, I'm going to try Seconds for the first time. I still haven't gone and sat down in there. But you've gotten takeout. Yeah, I think I got takeout like once or twice there. Um, steaks were amazing. It was we like should have them back in. I would like an update. I mean, I go in there, I talk to, um, uh, you know, I, I always ask how they're doing, and, and yeah. they always seem to be crowded. Small place. Yeah. Um, but ideal to like go in and just leave with a nice cut of meat. Mm -hmm. um, anything you want, cut the way you want. Uh, how did we turn this into a, <laughs> a Yelp review? It's okay. Well, I'm so starving. you know, we, you're going to Las Vegas, right? And yes. of course, you, you're jogging memories for me on food and and oh. school. You know, because you're right. I did go to UNLV. Mm -hmm. To college out there that's wow. got to be a fun place to go to college i could imagine it was Jeez. uh it, it was a nice nice time especially in the winter when you didn't really have to bundle up to walk to class right oh yeah, yeah. so um i can't imagine having had to do that you know Ooh, at Buffalo northeast, or, northeast yeah. uh, school but uh so if i could give you a, a recommendation or two for food when you're out there sure. do it so i, I would recommend it. the bootlegger okay which is on the south end of the strip uh south mm -hmm. of um Mandalay Bay. Okay. Mm. A couple miles. Bootlegger. Would, the bootlegger. I would recommend that. Authentic Italian cuisine. Um, the actually, the, the owner's family is actually from, originally from the Niagara Falls area. Oh, awesome. Oh, nice. Uh, so nice, nice little New York, yeah. uh, Las Vegas connection there. Bootlegger. I love that. All right, I remember that. Yeah. Last time I was in Vegas, we ate at an Italian place that was in the, near the old strip. Yes. The old Las Vegas, and this place was like, I mean, speaking of sackets, I don't know if you've ever been to Antonina's in the oh. past. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. everybody has. Um, but it, it was almost like an Antonina's type of feel. A little bit bigger um, and a little darker, so but hungry. it was just like this old, you know, and you just envision like the Rat Pack going to a place like that in the old days, and the food was just out of this world. I can't remember the name it of it. It might have been Chicago Joe's. <laughs> Like it might have been. I don't remember uh, the name at all. I'm so I know hungry. that I do remember the food was amazing. I'm I'm gonna text Catherine Chase after this because she comes on next week already because mm -hmm. it's the end of the month and I'm gonna tell her she needs to bring food now from somewhere because I'm so <laughs> hungry after this show. And yeah, we're yeah, we get um, some wine. I've been looking at the weather for the past couple of weeks ahead of this trip and it's every single day is upper 60s and sunny. Cold overnight, though, this time of year. It does cool down at night. Yeah, yeah so it's, we it's, have it's like, like a 30 degree, degree swing between day and night. Yeah, wow. so we have um, on Friday, I think we're teeing off at like 7.45 a.m. It'll be chilly. Yeah, and, and then by probably five holes in, you'll be warm again. But. That's awesome. 
I'm hoping when I leave next week for Florida that I have some good weather as well. And yeah, Florida, is a, Florida's pretty it's solid. Right chance. You, you more chance in Florida that you're going to get rain, but it's only going to be like a quick rain and then it'll end. I'm going to be one of those adult Disney goers, and we're going to go to Disney for a day. Just you're going to Disney? Yep, just for a day. We're going to go on a random. It's like a Thursday, so Very good. maybe it won't be as crowded, and uh, we're just going to act like crazy kids, like we are. In my just make sure you get the fast pass. Yeah, oh, of course. If you want to get any rides. Yeah, I gotta get. I gotta get that for sure. But, but you, you know, have any, you have a million things going on. I just want to touch base again on how people can find you and where they can sign up for these events. And then if you have anything else exciting going on, yes. that we didn't already get out of you. Yes, thank you. Yes, let's let's remind folks. Uh, this weekend <laughs> is the book share on Zoom. Please go to SenecaMeadows.com. Click on upcoming events, and you can you can submit your registration through there. Eleven to one, right? Eleven to one. Yes, yeah, starts at eleven a.m. And of course, uh, next weekend is the virtual trip to Costa Rica. Woo! Yeah, so, getting um, that warm feel there too. Absolutely, and that that also starts at eleven o'clock, and uh, that will be on Facebook Live. Perfect. So and you can of course, go right to your Facebook. And of course, let's not forget February twelfth is snowshoeing at the Wetlands Preserve. So yeah, you in can person, have no vir in, nothing virtual in about person, that one. In person, outdoors, safe and lots of fun. Well, Beautiful. before we leave, too, uh, don't you feel like the the Omicron is everywhere? Like everybody's got it. It seems like it's just like it's more prolific than last winter's normal COVID strain or whatever it is. Yes, but aren't we like almost to the point now where like this is like just time to get back to normal in terms of like. Herd immunity. We heard. I used to hear a lot about herd immunity. The vaccines have been available for so long. Um, I mean, is can we say that when the weather breaks this spring, that this is officially over? Oh, geez. I don't. I mean, know. it's a good question. You know, yeah. I, I. It makes me wonder. There's all these variants that keep coming out. What right. What's coming next? But um, it seems like, uh, you know, when we're outdoors in the fresh air, that seems to be. Um, uh, better for for everyone's health. So, but you know, you look. You, I watched football this past weekend. I mean, <laughs> those stadiums were packed. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Everywhere is still packed, and you'd like to hope it's because people are you know all vaccinated, and so they feel comfortable enough to go out and continue to live their life. But you know, and that you geez. could still get sick, yeah. but you wouldn't be a fatal affliction. Right. Well, and I think we're you know it's going to be more like the seasonal flu. I think moving right. forward, my opinion. Yeah, which it's fine. Let's let's do with that. Let's just right. get the shot yeah. once a year. And it's such a pain, honestly. I was a uh, normal, <laughs> a normal sick these past this past week and um the doctors wouldn't let me even go into the doctor's office they had to come out to my car and i just hope that eventually it gets back to normal where that you know there's not that scared type of life going on but i don't know like if I, a lot of people i know had covid or this omicron this latest thing a lot is mm -hmm. uh, over the past and three of us here at finger lakes one yeah um and never once was i being vaccinated was I worried that they weren't going to pull through, you know? Right. right. Yeah. But, you know, if you're not vaccinated, then there's some concern there. It is an interesting life we live now, and I just hope mm. people can get back to not having so much divide, you know, just like all these other vaccinations that you know about in your life and that kids have to get to go to school and stuff. I just hope that eventually we can get back to being a little bit more peaceful when it comes well, yeah, to this Well, don't topic. politicize everything. Um, and, you know, I just can't believe, like, in the old days, if your neighbor was a Democrat and you were a Republican, it didn't matter. Right. Now yeah. it's like, you know, you put up signs competing with each other. And Fear hate, thy you neighbor. Hate the other <laughs> person. You hate each other. Well, I think, we, I think we need to, you know, look to our, our leadership and our, our community to take that lead by example, right? That's I mean, a good point. There's, yeah. there's no reason why we can't we can't uh, have good solid discourse and and still like each other. Yeah, God forbid people have their own thoughts. You know what I think would be the solution to the problem? <laughs> a Biden Liz Cheney ticket oh. in the next <laughs> president election. Like get well, like let's combine the tickets. Although I I don't know. I, I personally believe that you got the the radical left and the far right, you know, like those are just buzzwords. And that is like, if you take all of the radical left and the most of the left isn't radical. And if you take the, <laughs> the far right, the ones that would go to a Trump rally and you know, that they, he has in Arizona, 
still now, like, um, that, that's less than 5% of the country, those two groups combined, but they make all the noise. All of us, 95% of Americans, we don't care that much about <laughs> that stuff. It's just, so, oh. yeah, enough's enough well, of everything. I can't even get explain the amount of different topics that we touch base on in this short 30-minute podcast and just like that. Got any hot stock tips? Yeah. <laughs> Did you invest in Bitcoin? Right. Something that the wetland preserves maybe can think about doing a Zoom about later on. How about that? But literally, really, we're already out of time. Always a pleasure, Mark. Let's give back to Thank remembering you so that we have a lot of great events going on that you guys always host. You can go to their Facebook and check them all out and sign up for all the ones that you're interested in to get you through these colder months. Thanks so much. Have a safe trip, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, yes, you should. And thank you for everybody that was watching. If you enjoyed the show, you can click like, you can share with your friends, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be back for Wine Wednesday next week. And until then, have a good week.